What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do an informational video about the rarity of sports cards that I'm sure will help a lot of people out there understand more about the sports cards hobby, especially people who are just getting started or just now getting back into things after a long break from collecting. Uh, there won't be any product opening in this video. It's all going to be up on the screen. I'll show all the cards that I need to talk about. So it's kind of like a, a slideshow. Basically what this video is going to cover is most of the questions that people might have when it comes to a card's rarity. Uh, so let's actually get right into it guys. If you enjoy this kind of content and want to see more, drop a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. It uh, really helps out the channel and really helps us put more awesome content out there for you guys. So thank you for all the support and uh, yeah, it really means a lot to us. So the first question is simply, what is card rarity? To keep things simple, it's basically how hard it is to find a specific card. You know, pretty straightforward. And how hard it is to find that card is primarily decided by the print run of that specific card. So print runs can be anywhere from like one single copy made in the entire world to tens of thousands of a certain variation of that card. And as an example, the print run on a Panini Prison base card of any average player can reach, I'd say about like 50,000 copies and, and even more sometimes. And I know for sure that a few years ago, that number was around like 30 to 40,000. So I wouldn't be surprised if the print runs doubled since then to meet demand. And, um, of course, all this ties into card value as well, since the less there is of a certain card, the harder it is to find it, and the higher the value of the price of the card will be. Uh, and another aspect of rarity that can contribute to a card's value is what type of card stock it's printed on. So the most valuable types of cards are gonna be the Chrome cards, because compared to traditional cardboard stock that's used for cards, uh, Chrome stock is shiny, thicker, harder to scratch and bend, and has a much longer shelf life. And many of you may be familiar with these names, but the biggest Chrome products, of course, uh, from Panini are uh, Prism, Optic, Select, Mosaic, and from Topps, Topps Chrome, of course, and Bowman Chrome. And to name some of the regular stock sets, uh, those are going to be uh, Donruss, Contenders, Prestige, and many, many others. And one more thing to throw into the mix is the card's age. The older it is, the harder it's going to be to find reasonably priced sealed boxes, uh, just because they're not in production anymore, so people aren't actively uh, ripping packs of older product. Uh, just because it's harder to find out in the wild now. Uh, kind of like a classic car uh, to an extent. If uh, it's a really sought after card of like Michael Jordan, for example, or LeBron James rookie, Ronaldo and Messi cards from almost like 20 years ago, or even a relatively recent uh, Mike Trout rookie, uh, age definitely plays a role. And of course you can try to find super vintage cards from 75 years ago, but ultimately the card condition is uh, gonna be really what determines the final value on all the cards that I just mentioned and cards that are made today as well. So getting cards graded, which is an entirely different conversation on its own, um, definitely secures the card's value at whatever condition it's appraised at. But yeah, uh, now that we've covered most of the background that I can think of, uh, let's get into some modern parallels and types of rare cards you can find in typical sets. Uh, the set I'm mainly gonna be using uh, as an example throughout this entire video, um, for the most part, is gonna be this year's 2020-21 Panini Prism Basketball. And of course, none other than uh, Lamella Ball. He's here to help us decipher all these parallels and colors on the screen. Of course, I'm going to try to cover as many parallels as I can think of. And there are going to be some parallels out there that you won't see in this video, but for the most part, this should cover uh, all the essentials. As you guys can see here, starting us off is a base card of Lamella Ball from the Prism set. So um, this base card, compared to all of Lamella's other cards, is going to be the most common one to find. But just an FYI, compared to the other rookies and other vets in the same set, uh, Lamelo's print runs are going to be much lower uh, due to the fact that he's a high-profile rookie, and this also applies to like Anthony Edwards, James Wiseman, um, and typically all the top performing and top drafted rookies. So next we have uh, the insert, which has a smaller print run than base cards typically, but due to the nature of inserts having uh, irregular and busier designs compared to the base, these don't have as much value. Uh, pretty cool cards nonetheless. Inserts uh, can also get uh, parallel versions and serial numbers, which we'll get into later uh, in this video. So up next is going to be our retail parallels, and these are all going to be a step up from uh, the base card that we saw earlier. Uh, retail products are ones that normally are sold at Target, Walmart, uh, bookstores, sporting goods stores, and uh, other similar stores. Um, those are going to be like uh, blasters, hangers, cello packs, gravity feed packs, uh, mega boxes, and sometimes full retail boxes. So uh, let's start off with this first one here. Uh, it's going to be our uh, red, white, and blue, which can be typically found in cello packs. And the next one is going to be the green prism, uh, which can be found across a lot of retail products, actually. 
And this is good, like typically your first colored uh, regular prism. And uh, typically in blasters, you can find purple waves. And of course, this does differ sometimes from sport to sport, uh, but just a general rule of thumb, uh, these are going to be a step up from the last two that we saw and arguably a step up from uh, the cracked ice parallels that we're going to see here in a sec. And so uh, red ice is next. And this parallel can be found from target mega boxes mostly. And the one after that is the orange ice, which is usually a hanger box exclusive. And the one after that, uh, the pink ice, which is typically found from uh, Walmart mega boxes. I know maybe in the past, like target has gotten pink ices, but they alternate from time to time. And the Ruby wave here is from the full retail box and is a slight step up from the cracked ices, uh, just because they're harder to find. They don't really make that many retail boxes compared to like uh, blasters or megas. And uh, one more kind of, of retail um, ice is going to be the Fanatics green ice, which can be only purchased through the Fanatics website directly. I mean, you, you can get it resell like eBay or wherever, but um, these simply have a smaller print run. Uh, than the previous ice parallels that we saw just because it's you know fanatics exclusive and next is a uh, Recent retail shimmer that caught a lot of people by surprise and you can equate this to like uh, a cracked ice in terms of rarity uh, Maybe slightly less, but this is typically uh, reserved for first off the line boxes, which we will cover later on in the video and uh, Purple shock is next and at this point most of the uncommon or uh, Atypical parallels from retail are going to be uh, on the same level as the cracked ices give or take and here's a multicolor pulsar that they threw in for soccer uh, to help you know hype things up uh, for the sport. Uh, this was from like a product like four years ago or so. Um, pulsars are typically harder to find than everything we've seen so far, and a lot of them are numbered cards, um, and they aren't really kind of like this one. This one is not numbered; it just has like a specific uh, pattern. But another uh, typically more rare uh, parallel is a red checkerboard, which Panini has recently added in some retail products. Uh, even for basketball, uh, but again, just to hype up the, the sport of soccer and like collecting, they kind of wanted to throw awesome parallels in there. And of course, one of the best parallels you can get across the board is going to be the silver prism, uh, also known as a hollow in Donruss sets and uh, a refractor in top sets. Just a very simple, appealing, nice color, nice look to it, everything. So silver is considered, um, I'd say, like maybe baseline for like really rare cards. And an honorable mention to some non-chrome regular stock cards. Uh, here's what a regular contenders card looks like. And here's the red foil parallel version of it. And now we jump into numbered cards for retail products. Uh, here's the first example, which is a red mosaic uh, from the Premier League Prism Soccer set. Uh, these can be found in blasters uh, and they're numbered to 159. And uh, what that means is that there were only 159 copies made of this card in the entire world. So this right here already boosts the card's rarity like way past uh, regular retail parallels. Uh, and as mentioned earlier, as an effort to promote soccer cards, they probably just did this um, and guaranteed uh, at least like one numbered card in Soccer Blasters to increase sales or something like that. Uh, and I think this whole thing kind of applied to products uh, released in March 2021 or earlier. Uh, typically, Blasters have a really low pull rate for numbered cards, so this was like huge for soccer fans. But onto the regular retail uh, numbered cards. Uh, these are going to be much rarer and the numbers will speak for themselves. But uh, here's the pink pulsar number to 42 uh, from the full retail box. And here's a purple pulsar number to 35, which you can get from gravity feed packs. And uh, the green pulsar number to 25. And these can be found in blasters. And now we get to the kabooms. And what these are basically is a pretty rare insert that has a comic look to it. A very distinct pattern, a thicker stock and uh, very hard to pull, typically a case hit. And next is the uh, regular checkerboard, and I have nothing to say about this other than uh, just look at how cool it looks. And next we have the zebra parallel, elephant parallel, tiger parallel, and um, I don't know, there's gonna be a, some animal prints to come later on in the video. Um, but the last few ones uh, we looked at uh, aren't exclusive to retail, and uh, these ones as well, and can also be found in hobby boxes, depending on the sport. But overall, retail is gonna be your uh, standard uh, rarity for cards uh, just because the parallels in them are more mass produced than uh, ones uh, we're going to see from hobby boxes next and uh, hobby boxes are going to be your baseline for finding a lot of rare cards and uh, like parallels uh, they pack these with a lot of numbered cards and a lot of exclusive parallels but of course it's much much more expensive than um, than retail so basically 10 times the price and a lot of times like way more than that 
And uh, real quick, let's actually discuss the uh, SP versus SSP topic. If you're not familiar with these abbreviations, uh, SP stands for uh, short print and SSP stands for super short print. Uh, short print cards are any card number to 100 and above, and super short print cards are any cards number to 99 and below. So let's get started with the hobby parallels. Uh, multicolor is going to be the first one we look at, and this comes in a few different patterns and uh, typically not numbered. So here's another one. And uh, next up is going to be the classic uh, hyper prism. Uh, it's basically like a silver with a pattern. Some people kind of compare it to cracked ice, but um, that's a different story. This one is more like a fixed grid pattern. And now for our first typical numbered hobby parallel, the good old red numbered to 299. And uh, yeah, looks really nice for teams with uh, red colors. And um, while we're talking about team colors, uh, cards value will typically be higher if there is any kind of color match or any sort of color harmony with the jersey or, or team colors. Um, it just looks very pleasing overall, so collectors actively see color matches. And next is our blue, numbered to 199. Same story with the red that we just saw. And uh, the purple ice, uh, out of 175 here. Solid white, out of 149. Blue ice, so nice, out of 125. And the first of the super short prints is the purple prism out of 99. Neon green out of 75 for all the neon lovers out there. And the next one is the orange wave number to 60. Regular orange prism out of 49. And the tie dye out of 25, getting more and more SSP here. Uh, good old classic mojo pattern out of 25 as well. And uh, here's a special background silver WNBA 25th anniversary uh, out of 25 as well. And the last parallel out of 25 is gonna be your camo pattern. And this takes us to our gold parallel, uh, the typical out of 10 prism. Uh, really, really clean, really kind of like baseline for like out of 10 cards. And uh, our next is a duo color pattern, which is gonna be the black gold out of five. And the other parallel out of five is gonna be the gold vinyl parallel. Very, very sick pattern if you ask me. Uh, what's interesting about this one is that Topps call this um, a super factor. I mean, it has like the same pattern. Sometimes companies have like patterns that overlap. Um, but yeah, theirs is actually a one of one, which we'll actually get into in a sec. And here's the last of the numbered hobby cards. Uh, none other than the one of one black prism. Can't go wrong with this one. A lot of people don't grade one of ones because if you think about it, it's always gonna be a pop one no matter what. But if you do get a 10, it definitely increases the value of the card um, because I mean, you're, you're basically guaranteeing that this is a perfect card condition. So who doesn't want an absolutely perfect one out of one? And now for the hobby exclusive super rare insert, the Color Blast. As you guys can see, the appeal is huge for these cards. Uh, these are typically multi-case hits, so almost 10 times rarer than Kabooms, if not more. And uh, here's another one of Hung Min Sun, and here's a black Color Blast, typically found uh, from Obsidian sets. And up next is the very appealing Genesis Parallel. This one is also extremely hard to hit depending on the sport, and honestly, one of my personal favorites. So. Just look at that pattern, admire it. And let's go to another honorable mention, which is variations. And what these are is basically just an alternate image of the player. Um, and these are typically very hard to pull. Um, they also come in parallels, but a very, very limited amount of them. Like they're not gonna have all the parallels for variations. And uh, yeah, all right, I think we're halfway through. Um, if you thought we were close to being done, I have some good or bad news for you, depending on how you look at it. But uh, up next is the first off the line category or FOTL. And uh, what that is, is basically Panini's like first shipped um, hobby boxes that go directly from Panini to the buyers. Uh, all those boxes will have this unique sticker on it uh, to make it easier to distinguish from like a regular hobby box, avoid any kind of confusion. Uh, these are released a week or two before hobby boxes come out typically and have exclusive parallels, which we'll look at right now. So starting us off is our classic blue shimmer parallel, typically out of 35. And uh, our next one is gonna be the very rare stars pattern, uh, which a lot of vintage Pokemon card collectors might be familiar with. And um, next uh, out of 10 is of course our gold shimmer. And you're probably noticing a pattern here for the first offline parallels. It's gonna be the green shimmer out of five. And last but not least, the one and only black shimmer parallel. So uh, next let's talk about a mini hobby category that kind of falls in between hobby and retail. And that's mainly for the price tag. Uh, of course, this category also um, has its own exclusive parallels. And uh, let's take a look at what this category is called across all various sports. Um, you have fast break, no huddle, breakaway, quick pitch, disco, circles, hybrid, H2, you name it. And uh, this product is typically cheaper, as I mentioned. 
And um, yeah, let's uh, look at the parallels. So uh, first is fast break blue, or circles if you want to call it that, because uh, that's what it looks like. Um, and typically uh, you'll see a lot of similarities with hobby parallels just with a twist, and that twist is going to be these circles. Uh, then we have the red, then we have the purple, then we have the bronze, then the gold, the neon green or even pink sometimes, but you guys get the gist of it. Basically the format is a slightly different look compared to hobby parallels. And um, yeah, let's actually go on to the next category, which is going to be our region exclusive parallels, which is uh, very common in Asia and can be seen as like T-Mall or Choice, as what they call it. And uh, these have a much smaller print run than the regular hobby or retail category, so the demand for these kind of goes up by default. Uh, so starting us off is the Blue Wave Parallel, and next is the really nice looking Gold Wave, and basically getting to a point um, where the company is using all different colors and patterns and combinations that they have. And here's where choice patterns kick in. This large circle pattern is commonly known as scope. And uh, this specific one is the green, yellow, blue. Then we have our choice red, choice blue, choice green. And then the really sought after peacock pattern. If you thought animal prints were long gone, you were wrong. So these are also very, very rare and very hard to get. So imagine getting a uh, rookie in one of these. And last but not least is the Choice Exclusive Nebula. This one is similar to the Genesis parallel in terms of looks, but it has more of an like outer spacey stardust uh, look to it. Uh, one of one, of course, so you can only imagine the value of these uh, on like a top player or like a top rookie. But uh, yeah, home stretch, guys, <laughs> last few categories. Um, so let's look at the uh, couple of online exclusive parallels, and these can be found directly on uh, the Panini website or Topps website typically in exchange for like points rather than actual like currency. But our first one is going to be the uh, mural looking white sparkle. And after that we have the cosmic prism. And you guys can kind of notice the pattern has like that, that sparkle look to it. And uh, they typically only make around like 20 of these from what I've read, hence the SSP. Uh, things might change in the future, but I think that's a good kind of rule to go by. And the next category is actually going to be patches. If you didn't already know, you can get pieces of uniform or gear from a lot of players. Uh, these are also called swatches or memorabilia. And uh, a lot of times the stuff is game worn, uh, which is really cool. But unfortunately, in a lot of retail, or like most of retail, Panini likes to use random pieces of cloth not related to any specific games or events, which, yeah, people call napkins. Anyway, uh, an example of what that looks like is uh, right here with a Lamello Rookie Patch or RP. And the next one is going to be a Kevin Durant patch. And as you can see, these can also come in parallel patterns. This one is the blue mojo. And our next category is going to touch on autographs real quick. Uh, these are most commonly known as autos, uh, even though they're always listed as signatures on checklists and products. Um, they also come with um, almost all the parallels that you can find for like a regular card. Um, so like hobby and like retail, all those parallels can also apply to, to auto cards. And uh, you can get these from almost any product, not exclusive to a specific category. So uh, here are some examples. Then we have printing plate autos, which is uh, pretty cool. What they do is basically they take a printing plate that they use to uh, print on the card. You know, that they have to press on a piece of paper to kind of uh, print and they use different colors uh, for different plates to get the entire combination. And this is just one of them. And then you have the Rookie Patch Autos, one of the most sought after types of cards out there, uh, just because they're, you know, it's an auto, it's a patch, and it's a rookie. So it's really, it's like a trifecta of combination to make everything like really, really hard. And finally, we have the Redemptions. I uh, pulled a few of these on the channel. Uh, these are very hit or miss. They typically do this for players who haven't signed their cards um, or auto stickers by the time the set is released. Um, and another scenario is like if it's a high profile player and the companies don't want to risk any kind of damage to the auto card uh, while it's in the box, uh, they typically will give you a redemption, which you can redeem online. And uh, here's the tops version. And here's the last category actually, which we'll just call other <laughs> at this point, because there's just so many parallels out there and I try to include as many as I could. Um, but you're gonna see a lot of uh, miscellaneous types, uh, but a lot of them are pretty rare and do look pretty sick. So here's our uh, checker prism, 
Uh, and then we have a die cut, which isn't shaped like a typical like rectangular card. Obviously they have to cut it in a specific shape that, that they want. And then we have metal cards. Yes, full metal, believe it or not. Uh, this one's called stainless stars. So you can take a while to guess it's made out of stainless steel. And then we have our snake skins. Really, really cool. A uh, giraffe pattern, light blue pulsar, green mojo, red mojo, and green checkerboard. And of course, team logos or crests, which are really, really cool in my opinion. Uh, they're just really, really hard to find because they don't make a lot of them. And last but not least is uh, another honorable mention, which is uh, stickers. And these are huge in Europe. Um, these are like huge in the soccer collecting hobby. Um, so here's just an example of what they look like. Let's use Mo Salah once again, because uh, he's a beast. And uh, here's a foil sticker. And if you're curious about how these fare against uh, regular sports cards, uh, this is how much smaller they are. And um, they're also super, super thin and very fragile. Uh, pretty easy to damage, so you just have to be really careful when you're uh, dealing with these. And the absolute last thing I want to cover is uh, draft picks versus regular cards. Uh, draft picks come in all forms of parallels as uh, regular sets, uh, but they do have the college logos um, and the college jerseys instead of professional league stuff. Um, so they still hold some value, but overall nowhere near like NBA cards or NFL cards uh, in value. I personally don't mind them. Uh, it's just how the market is typically. But uh, anyway, uh, that concludes the video, guys and gals. Um, and I hope you found this video very helpful and uh, very useful. It took quite some time to make this, so I hope that this was actually like pretty informational. And I hope that everyone can learn something uh, from this. So uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Drop a like down below and show us some love. And uh, as always, we'll see you in the next one.